Die Silicon Valley Tour wird euch präsentiert von US Now, dem Inkubator der Scout24 Gruppe. Wenn ihr gründen wollt, bewerbt euch jetzt um die Förderung eures Startups bei US Now. Und Forward.io. Als CTO as a Service entwickelt Forward.io Web- und Mobile-Anwendungen speziell für Startups. Welcome to Venture TV. Welcome Patrick Morg from Google. And Patrick, you are working um, on Google Play and you're one of the, of the um, uh, guys who decides what is going to be put up um, on the favorite pick list of Google Play. And so you are the, fir you are the, the perfect uh, person to answer what makes um, apps and, and games successful on Google Play. So first one, are there, are there any um, apps or uh, games that have a certain something that makes them successful and lets them rise up really high in the, in, in, at Google Play? Well, you know, it's a great question. And, and you know, first let me clarify that, say, uh, you know, my, my role at Google Play is, you know, I, I work on the marketing team. I, I head marketing for, uh, for Google Play for our Play Store. I work very closely with our merchandising team who, do, who makes those decisions in terms of what gets featured. Yeah. Um, I think there's kind of two ways to break it down. You know, one way is kind of what can developers control, what can developers do to improve the odds of being featured or, or doing very well on the Play Store. Um, I think there's a number of things that we see kind of that always repeat themselves. Um, you know, first of all, I think, you know, game and application quality are, are very, very important, right? I think the more time developers spend really making sure that their application is, you know, very, very polished, has a simple to use uh, graphical interface, um, is very easy and intuitive to use, uh, potentially has, you know, features and technology that provide a tutorial, for example, for consumers to learn how to use the app more quickly. Um, I think another thing that you know helps uh, app developers become successful is you know having a broad availability of their app or their game on a lot of different devices. Okay. Right. I think one of the things, of course, uh, about successful apps is successful apps tend to go viral. Right. If you find a game or an app that you like, you share that with your friend. Right. If your friend then finds out that their device is not supported, you know that provides a bad Very experience. Bad. Right. You know, or for example, if the game or the app doesn't run as well on your phone as it does on my phone. Um, good applications and games tend to have a consistent user experience across all the devices that they are that they run on right. and run across multiple devices, a large segment of our devices. Um, other things that app developers can do, I think, is provide very compelling marketing assets. So, you know, great imagery and great, great, you know, uh, GIFs or, or, or PNGs or JPEGs of their apps All right. that so really should make a good first impression. Exactly, because yeah. it's like, you know, it's like when you buy a can of Pepsi, right? It's yeah. like you buy the, the packaging, right? You like the way the Pepsi can right. looks or you like better the way the Coke can looks, right? Yeah. The, the, the imagery and the videos that you have for your app or your game, that's like the packaging for your app or your game. So the more time you spend on it, the more polished it is, and the more a consumer can understand what they're going to be downloading, especially if they're paying for it, yeah. you know, the better the probability that they're going to download your application. Um, believe it or not, having very good relevant text descriptions mm -hmm. makes a big difference, especially for searches within the store. Right. So you know, if you are very concise in terms of describing your application, what it does, how it benefits consumers, why potentially it's better than some other applications out there, all these things help. All right. So. Then, and then there is like, these are the things that um, are like part of the app and makes, make the, the app rise automatically. Mm -hmm. But then there are also the, the editor picks, sure. um, apps you pick that are really cool. Yeah. So uh, what's the, what's the um, things that attract your attention? That's a great question. I think there's a number of things that are attract our attention. I think, you know, first of all, we're really looking for applications that are very, very high quality um, across a very wide range of devices. And these days, one of the things we're really looking for as well is we want to make sure that that quality, that application experience or that game experience is also on tablets, yeah. right? So, okay. you know, you've seen the news about the launch of our Nexus 10, 10-inch yeah. tablet, the Nexus 7, uh, more portable tablet. It's becoming increasingly important for us to make sure that those great apps and games also run on tablet devices. Right. So, having a very high quality product that runs not only in, on most of our phones, um, but also runs on our tablets, that's something that, of course, is going to pique our attention. Uh, I think the other thing that's going to pique our attention is, you know, what is the developer doing to really leverage the Android ecosystem? Like, uh -huh. what are they doing with their application that is not only the best practices in terms of adhering to Android development guidelines, but also perhaps takes advantage of some of the unique functionalities around Android, right? So, for example, you know, an ice cream sandwich, we, we launched, you know, um, what we call Android Beam. 
right, which is your ability to put two devices connected yeah. together where I can simply transfer uh, an application to you know, my friend's device, yeah. right? If I don't have, if he doesn't have the app on his device, you know, it will immediately take him to the Google Play Store where basically it lands him on the product page so he can download that app. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think developers who are doing cool things where they take advantage of things that are inherent to Android, whether it's Android Beam or whether it's kind of, you know, personalization of the platform. Yeah. For example, we see game developers that are, com that are creating really compelling um, content beyond just their games, like dynamic live wallpapers. All right. right. Again, these are things that are pretty cool that you can do on Android that you can't necessarily do as well or as easily on other platforms. And they show us, as uh, the play team, they show us that you're really kind of taking that extra effort to do something unique on Android. Mm -hmm. okay. um, lastly, I think, you know, obviously, we want to support as many developers as we can, yeah. especially the ones that are making great content. But I think the other thing that we're also really keen on is we really want developers to treat Android at least as an equal platform, right? So it's much more challenging for us if somebody comes to us and say, hey, look, I've already released my game or my application on this, on this other platform six months ago. Yeah. Now I'm going to release it on Android. Will you please support me? Um, and in, in many cases, if the application or game is good enough, you know, we will definitely look at that and yeah. we may support you. But I think one of the things that's important for consumers is, you know, if, if I'm on a... If I'm on an iPhone and I have a great experience and I tell my friend about it, but he you know, has an Android phone, there's no reason why that consumer should be penalized because they're on a different operating system, yeah. right? So one of the things that we also tell developers is, you know, make sure that you're doing simultaneous releases. You know, if you're releasing on, I, uh, on, on iOS, release on Android at the same time. Yeah. If you want to release on Android first, that's a different question. You know, it's we're not going to get it. That's not okay. bad for us, so we won't say no. Um, but you know, we also want to make sure that the application experience, or the game experience, is at least on parity with what is on other platforms. Yeah. And you know, consumers see through that. If they download you know an application on Android and it's missing some of the features that it has on another platform, that's not a good experience for consumers, yeah. and that's not fair to those consumers. So those are things that we really look at very very heavily as well. Is you know, is it releasing same day as other platforms? Does it at least have the same the feature parity as other platforms? Yeah. Those are things that we look at as well. All right. Last question would be, um, how can you earn as much money as possible with your apps and with your games? Mm -hmm. uh, is that, should, should you release the games and, and apps for free and then hope that as many people as possible download things and then you do in-app purchases or should you um, take as much money as, po as possible yeah. just right from the start? What, what have you seen? What, what's the the best way to make money? You know, it's a really complex question. Well, it's a simple question with a very complex answer. Um, I think part of it really depends on what kind of application you're building, okay. right? I mean, some applications lend themselves to a subscription model. Some applications lend themselves better to an advertising model. Other applications lend themselves better to a one-off paid model. It really depends on the application that you're doing. You know, we see that, for example, you know, antivirus uh, applications monetize well you know, because they will allow the consumer to download the application for free for the yeah. first 30 days, for example, and then you have to pay a subscription for a year to continue to use it, and it has clear value to you as a user. Um, you know, some games, you know, monetize very, very well as a one-off paid download because they are extremely high quality, right? Okay. Rings of Chaos, for example, um, you know, by Square Enix is a good example of yeah. that, uh, and Final Fantasy is a great example of that, right? So you can make money with a paid download, and ask consumer for five, six, or ten dollars, but the game quality has to be incredibly high and the experience has to be very well polished. Yeah. And then of course, you know, the, the reality is that a lot of the growth today is coming from, you know, what we call freemium, right? Yeah. Or, or even paymium, right? Yeah. Which is the application is downloaded for free and then you're, you're buying in-app, you know, uh, credits, you know, to achieve certain tasks. Yeah. And that, up, you know, that monetization method has been very successful and we see developers doing well there. I think that the challenge for developers is to find the, the, the best model that works for their application and in the right market, right? And what you'll see as well as a developer is different countries monetize differently. All right. You know, in some countries, you know, the, the consumers may be more averse to paying for content because they are all on prepay plans, yeah. you know, right? You look at a market like, you know, Italy or, uh, or uh, India, you know, 
90% plus of the consumer population is on prepaid cards. Okay. So they don't necessarily have a contract that they can just debit yeah. you know, the purchases right. to, their, to their phone account, right? Um, whereas in other, in other countries like the United States or England, you, know, you have a much higher concentration of, of contract uh, users. And so those people are more open to buying content more frequently. So it depends on a lot of factors is the short answer. I think what developers really need to do is experiment with multiple business models and then continuously test and really analyze the data. Look at their you know, monthly active downloads or monthly active engagement metrics, you know, the return metrics, and kind of you know, measure over time and see what works best. Awesome. Well, that was pretty interesting. Thanks a lot sure. for the good answers and the interesting answers. And uh, yeah, well, um, now you've one, heard quite a lot. One last thing as oh, well. Yeah. Uh, one last thing just as a tip uh, to your viewers is, uh, you know, I, I had a 60-minute a um, speech about all of, all of some of these things that you asked about uh, at Google I.O. this year. All right. Uh, and you can actually view that video, all 60 minutes of it, on YouTube. If you search for it, um, if you look for my name, Patrick Mork, and then look for Google I.O. speech on right. App Marketing 101 on YouTube, you will find it, and it has uh, 60 minutes of detail. So Really cool. So if you're int interested in the details, just go there, see the video, and uh, get to know more about Google Play. Thanks a lot. Thank you.